Saturday, June 6th. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? So, yes, some music and some general stuff, as you usually get from me. We'll start off by saying rest in peace to Stephen Priest of Sweet, their bass player. No, I have never bought a Sweet record, but uh, it was good on the radio, and I did enjoy it. Um, Love is Like Oxygen, I think, is uh, one of their impressive songs. When I was a kid, I got tired of the glam thing pretty quick because it seemed too tongue-in-cheek tongue, tongue in cheek and I didn't know what the point of it was, you know. Um, boys dressing a little bit like girls, it's like what, even then my thought was, what is the big deal? I mean, this really is the way we are. Rest in peace. The other person who uh, passed away yesterday um, is Rupert Hine mostly known to people for his production work. He produced some big hits for people like The Fix and Tina Turner and a bunch of people. But I know him from his work, um, his solo work. Uh, do I still have him here? These early ones. I, I, I'm still on the lookout for an affordable copy of this on vinyl. Rupert Hines' Pick Up a Bone. And then this one I've never even seen an actual album of. Unfinished Picture, Rupert Hine. He had golden ears. Great producer, but also a good a good musician. And uh, had an, a distinct vo voice of his own. So I have just a couple of his records. Immunity, this is really good. Somewhere Between Pop and what they call New Wave. This one, The Wildest Wish to Fly. I don't think he had a hit up here, but I remember the video. Um, something about um, love. Misplaced love. Interesting man with that jaw. What a jawline, huh? Um, I liked him. I like... Do I have one more still sitting up? Well, yeah, I do. I pulled a couple things to listen to last night that I knew he had produced, but also this band that he started, Quantum Jump. They used to have the first album. I don't know why I sold it. They had a minor hit with uh, something about um, the Lone Ranger, which was not my introduction. My introduction to the band was because I knew who Rupert Hine was, and I bought these when they came out. Love that cover too. <laughs> um, he produced this album by Camel. I can see your house from here. Good album. John G. Perry, who was in um, Caravan for a while. This is a beautiful, beautiful and serene album, Sunset Waiting. See that cover? It's perfect for this album. This is wonderful. So, so yes, I've been hearing from folks, you know, and uh, I got more to show, but let me just talk for a minute because we're in this together, people. I heard from Greg Eklund, formerly of Everclear. We had an, a, a nice conversation um, yesterday. He got a hold of me. He's up in Minneapolis. So he's been on the front line. And um, there's, my brother, there's my brother Greg. When he was here in Omaha, we got tight. Um, his wife um, knew about me and, and said, seek me out. And... Um, He's a road hog, so he's also going a little crazy because he was on the, the, the road almost all the time with Storm Large, and that's all been shut down. But um, good people are all of a single mind that this all has to change, and the racism has to end systemically and systematically for the benefit of everyone, including his white children. That's the thing that w smart, woke people realize, that ending the systemic mistreatment and second um, hand treatment of people with color, ending that is going to benefit everyone, including the people who keep doing it. They're just too, um, I don't know what's, you know, I, I wake up and look at what's going on in the world and it's like, this isn't going to die down anytime soon. And it's just really the insanity and psychosis to me of um, racial hatred and greed those are the two things that are behind this stuff. There's no excuse for them. None whatsoever. Um, 
I want to just keep saying that I am so pleased that people are waking up. So many things run through my mind to try to share. And then they, they flit away. I played some more uh, magma. Slegtons. You can't see. It's, it's embossed. That is power music. That is power music. Okay, so Anthony Ferraro sent me another uh, care package. VCLT. Two CDs. Brand new releases. Alan Holdsworth. Frankfurt, 1986. This is lovely. It's the CD and the DVD. I haven't watched the DVD yet. DB yet. I haven't watched it yet, but I've listened to the whole concert. Thank you so much, Anthony. Anytime I can hear more Alan Holdsworth playing, I love it. I particularly like it when Alan is with Jimmy Johnson and Gary Husband. They were very sensitive to his playing. Gary Husband, as a drummer and keyboardist, really understood how to interpret Alan Holdsworth's playing. Beautiful. Thank you, Anthony. And uh, I posted this yesterday in some groups and people didn't know it was out yet. So uh, thank you, Anthony. I kind of like being the one to spread the news. Soft Machine Live at the Baked Potato. This is when the current lineup of Soft Machine, no original members left, but when they came to America and played 2019 out on the West Coast. This is in the tradition. So yes, I accept it as Soft Machine, although there are no original members. Someone asked me online, what did I think of this? And I said, well, it's old guys, but these old guys can play. But you can hear that they're old as well. Not the whole band, but particularly John Marshall on drums. There's times when I can literally hear as a drummer that this is difficult for him. I don't think I'm imagining that. This is beautiful, though. It is the essence of Soft Machine. It is. It really is. Man, there is a point that I wanted to make today, and it just keeps coming and then escaping me. But I think one of the, part of what it is I want to get across here is the reason why it's important for us to keep... Oh, this is it. Yes. Okay. So, I, for one, have been hoping to see that, you know, the need for civil unrest, you know, rioting and tearing things up would um, calm down by now. The thing that we are seeing is that there are outside agitators, a couple of different sources who are keeping it going. And this, this is the one that is the most galling, is that the very small-minded white people who complain about black people are the ones who are creating the violence. The Boogaloo Boys. This is so sad, you know. It's like all we are is trying to be treated decently and we just keep coming up against these people and I'm I'm gonna say it these white people that are just seem to be full of the devil. Very and it's really odd to think that they really think that they somehow deserve to be the only ones. How does that make sense? No one can explain it in a way that makes sense. So it's that's one aspect of the protesting that we're dealing with that's muddying the waters that we have these outside agitators who are intent upon disrupting and, um, as always, um, shitting in the, in the punch bowl. But the other thing that I'm seeing, two other things is, we have a lot of young people, a lot of young people of all colors who are acting out. They don't have the benefit of history. They weren't there before in the riots to see the how the, the police and the, you know, the uh, country was just intent on stopping it. They weren't interested in listening to the complaint. They just wanted them to stop. So those young people who are still civilly acting out, supposedly in protest of black lives, are a little bit lost, okay? And then the other thing that I would say is that for if there are black people who are still causing... Um, um, damage, physical damage, well, that's how deep the frustration is. I don't excuse it. But we are already hearing where, um, unfortunately, the blind destruction is, de is destroying a lot of black and minority-owned businesses. 
but that's how intense the rage is. I do not condone the violence, but I understand where it's coming from. I also understand that to a degree, there needed to be some in order to catch people's attention, okay? But at this point, good people who want change are not don't just want to riot and sh fuck shit up. And that's what white racists and people like Trump are are saying against the protest and against black people and co people of color. They always want to go to that and just say, we're well, just a bunch of dumb people that want to tear shit up. That is not true. And yet that is what I'm hearing, you know, coming from the right. I'm not left, people. I'm not left. I'm, 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 I'm a person. I don't even want to, I'm not going to use the word centrist, although people are saying you can't avoid it, left, right, center. I understand that, but I'm still, I'm an old hippie. Fuck that ignorance. All of it is ignorant and stupid. Catch up with me. I'm a citizen of this planet. What the fuck are you people? Left, right. Idiots. All of you. What the fuck? It ain't going to work. Left versus right. It's not going to work. That's the other reason why it's this whole racist thing is just fucking ignorant and stupid. It's not going to work. It's also why this the intensity of the of the uh, of everything is so intense because we have such a long history worldwide of uh, white people just doing wrong and fucking up and uh, taking advantage everywhere. Down in Australia, they're protesting, and thank goodness they're protesting on behalf of the indigenous Aborigines down there who just had like here in America, everything just taken out from under their feet. You know, there's a lot that the white man has to answer for in the position of authority and how they just raped the entire planet. Why is it that the, the white people were able to just go to Africa and just take everything, the diamonds and the gold? It's wrong. It's wrong. It is. It is wrong. And these, this is what it's about, the outrage. It's like, historically, these folks have been out of pocket forever. And they wanted to go back to that? Hell the fuck no. I could be hateful against white people, and I'm not. I'm hateful against this injustice. Yesterday was Lori Anderson's birthday, I found out late in the day, by checking in with Brian Eno. And I love Lori Anderson's work. She has that song on here, Language is a Virus. And the little way that she talks about it and describes it in the song is perfect. Language is a virus. And it is used often against people. Here's another thing that is becoming apparent. The reason why Trump is doing so well with his base is because he, they don't, this is, this is a playbook thing about power. It's not that people care that their leader is lying. It's the whole idea that he's so, pow so powerful that he can lie. And then they'll and they'll swallow it, and that's what we have going with Trump. You know, he's using play by play, and it's working like a charm on dumbasses, and people with limited um, intellect, and people with developmental disability. I know this as a as a former professional of mental health. People with they're concrete. What you set in front of them and tell them that's what it is. That's what it is forever. And so Trump is the president. That's what these that's what these folks see. So they are easily corralled into the, the fold. That's why this whole Trump um, thing is just a it's such a tragedy for the entire world, especially our nation. You can spin it any way you want, but we're going we're losing. We're not gonna come out with some sort of shiny surprise ending like that fake sick smile that you see Trump give sometimes once again I'm a you know a former clinician I recognize the illness he looks so mentally unwell all the time and the harder he tries the more it comes the more I see it and I'm sure there's other people from my background who see it as well it's too bad Congress has no nads cowards they're supposed to be representing the people we haven't had a democracy in a long time. It's an oligarchy. Let's keep fighting. Let's get this bullshit over with.
Things have got to change. Keep spinning good music. Oh, more information about my upcoming show and other stuff soon. Have a good weekend.